Hi, this is Dr. Rivera, and today we're going to do Beetle and Tatum's Metabolic Pathway Experiment. So we're going to start out with the Metabolic Pathway, and this is just a pretend one. So we're going to start out with Enzyme A. Enzyme A is going to convert product 1 into product 2. So this is our starting substrate and when the starting substrate goes through enzyme A, it makes product number two. Next up in our pathway is enzyme B. This is going to convert two into three, and then our pathway is going to have one more step with enzyme C, which converts three into four. Now four is going to be our final metabolic product. This is what the cell actually needs to live on. So in the Beetle and Tatum experiments, what they did is they looked at a bunch of different metabolic mutants that couldn't grow on simple media. They needed to have something added in. So in this case, let's think about what happens when we mutate any one of these three enzymes. So let's say that we have a mutation in enzyme A. Well, what's gonna happen now is we're gonna be blocking this step here where we convert one into product number two. If we don't have any product number two, then that means we can't do any of the other steps either. So our steps to make three and four, even though we have the enzymes around that can do them, they aren't gonna happen because we don't have the starting product number two here. So we have one, but nothing to convert one into two. And now, even though the rest of the pathway is fine, we cannot make product number four. So what happens if we don't have any B? So we'll get B minus. Well, now we still can make one into two because enzyme A works fine, but we cannot make two into three. And so therefore we also can't make any four. So we can have one and two around in the cell, but we won't be able to make three or four even though enzyme C still works. So how do we rescue these? So we're gonna rescue these by adding in different metabolites. So in the case of an enzyme A mutation, we can add in product number two, that will rescue. So if we bring in product number two, we just pop it right in here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then now the rest of the pathway can proceed. We can also add in product number three, and we're just going to completely bypass the A and B steps. And of course, we can add in number four. Number four should rescue everything. If we're missing enzyme B, let's see what it'll rescue. Well, if we add in number two, this isn't going to rescue because here number two, when we're missing B, is not going to be able to get converted into product three. So two won't rescue. Putting in three will rescue because we're able to bypass the step that's broken, the step right here. And of course, product four will rescue. That's our end product. So now I want to see what we expect from the results of a Beale and Tatum type experiment. So what we expect to see is for an A minus, B minus, and C minus strains, we expect to see different kinds of rescue. So let's try to rescue with adding in metabolite one, metabolite two, metabolite three, and metabolite four. Sorry about that. So we already know that metabolite four is gonna be able to rescue everything. That's the end product of this whole process. So this should rescue A minus strain, B minus strain, and C minus strain. That's because it's our end product. Metabolite three is gonna be able to rescue A or B minus because it's able to bypass the A and B steps. 
adding an extra three will not be able to bypass the C step, and so it can't rescue a C minus mutation. Metabolite two is able to rescue the A step because it's bypassing it, but it's not able to bypass the B or C step. So adding in metabolite two will not rescue a B minus or C minus strain. Metabolite one doesn't bypass any step, and so it doesn't rescue anybody at all. If we wanna work backwards on this, we can try to think about how we would solve it if all we had was this chart information and we didn't have this information up here. Well, if we looked at a chart like this, the first thing we notice is that metabolite four rescues everything. So that tells us right away that four is at the very end of our pathway. And when we look to see what four rescues, but nothing else rescues, that's gonna be our C minus strain. So that suggests that C is at the end of our pathway as well. So C's job is to convert something into four. It's at the very end of our pathway. The only thing that can rescue it is four. Well, three, this metabolite is able to rescue everything except for C. So that suggests it goes right here in our pathway. So three gets converted by C into four. That's why C cannot be rescued. C minus strain cannot be rescued by three. Likewise, two can rescue strain A minus, but not strain B minus. So that suggests that this goes right here. That puts A at the beginning of our pathway. And we already know that one can't rescue anything. So one goes at the very beginning. It's the first metabolite in our pathway. So that's how to solve one of these Beetle and Tatum problems. We can go forwards or backwards in it. We can go from being able to predict what will rescue by knowing the pathway, or we can predict the pathway by knowing what rescues which different genotypes.